Hello everyone and welcome to the second day of the semi-finals of the Freestyle Chess GOAT Challenge 2024. Uh, it's Notre Dame Kabdu versus Magnus Carlsen and uh, we're gonna cover all of the games that were played today, which means we're gonna cover this one and then uh, about uh, six other games, but uh, I'm gonna get to that after we check out this game. So this is the first uh, uh, game we're showing, the second classical game uh, of the match, Notre Dame versus Magnus. Let's check it out and then we are going to continue with some other games. So Notre Dame with the white pieces opens with the d4 and Magnus won the previous game so Notre Dame now must win with the white pieces in order to force tie breaks. Magnus goes for pawn to f5 uh, and pawn to c4. We have pawn to c5 and now pawn to e3. We have pawn to d6 and pawn to f4. So going um, uh, for, for the control of dark squares. Uh, uh, and he will have to figure out later on how to develop his dark square bishop here. We have knight to f6, uh, knight to f3, uh, and now uh, I, I immediately go after the g1 square uh, when I see knight to f3, but the knight is actually on e1. Uh, pawn to g6, knight to f2, and now bishop to g7. So nicely uh, fianchettoing the, well, basically not fianchettoing, but um, uh, almost. Pawn to h3, knight to f7, and now pawn to g4, attacking on the king side. Pawn to d5, striking in the center, and now d captures on c5. We have rook captures on c5, and this is the first moment where uh, Noderbeck should have reacted, uh, uh, well, with, with with a swift pawn to b4. With, with a swift pawn to b4, the rook goes back, you advance the pawn to c5, and your position is very nice. Then Magnus would probably strike with pawn to a5, and we would have fireworks. But here, after rook captures on c5, knight to e5 was played, and now, okay, Magnus trades. Now Knight captures on e5, we have f captures, and now he uh, plants a knight on e4. We have knight captures on e4, f captures on e4, and bishop to h2. Yeah, that's the only way to develop the bishop, but also the only way to defend the e5 pawn. So bishop to h2, and now queen to c7. You could also play pawn to e6, but then look at this bishop on g8, it's a... Uh, a uh, really ugly piece, so instead Magnus goes for bishop to c7, nicely defends the pawn, uh, and also prevents any nasty discoveries as uh, the, the bishop on h2 is undefended. Uh, so here we have queen to a4, and now uh, he basically allows Magnus to win the game on the spot, uh, but uh, if he only if he plays correctly. So feel free to pause the video and try to figure out what Noderbeck missed by playing queen to a4, uh, while I give you a couple of seconds. <clears throat> So uh, for those of you who were able to do it, congratulations on finding this very nice idea. And for those of you who just want to enjoy the show, it is pawn to b5. Now you see why that b4 c5 idea was so strong. Uh, also one of the reasons. Uh, now the queen has to go back. You cannot capture. The rook on c1 is undefended. So queen back to c2. And now b captures on c4. We have queen to c3. Now adding more defenders to the, to the e5 pawn. Uh, and the bishop to e6. Uh, we have bishop to e2 developing and now king to b7. This is much, much better than castling queenside, for example, uh, as you, you can still castle, uh, because you put your king on the c file, the same file that uh, the, the white queen and rook occupy. But after bishop to e2, Magnus played king to b7, and okay, now we have castles uh, uh, kingside. Uh, this is also pretty crazy. Uh, yeah, here it seems like white king is under attack on the queenside, but he can still castle kingside as, uh, you know, uh, the, the king uh, hasn't moved, the rook hasn't moved, and there's nothing in between. We have queen to b6 by Magnus, and now pawn to a4. Pawn to a5, stopping further expansion. Now rook a to b1. Uh, queen to b3 stops the uh, push of the b pawn to open up the b file and offering a trade of queens. We have rook f to c1 and now rook captures on c3. Now Magnus only needs a draw to win the match uh, so he doesn't have to um, uh, play for the win but uh, bishop to h6 was the way to go here. And then after something like bishop to f4 you trade for example captures captures and you keep the tension with rook a to c8, not d8. Uh, that's the way to do it. But uh, Magnus was satisfied with the draw. He played queen captures on c3, b captures, delivering a check here, and king to c7. We have pawn to h4, and now rook to c6, preparing to trade off rooks with rook to b6. We have rook to b5, and now just rook to b6. Magnus not overthinking this. He uh, wants to trade and he will retain a better position. Uh, rook c to b1 and now rook captures on b5. We have rook captures and king to c6. We have bishop to g3. 
pawn to h6 and now pawn to g5. We have pawn to h5, king to g2 and bishop to f5 and there is no way for Noderbeck to make progress here. He is down a pawn, he's in a worse position and that's why he just played queen, bishop to d1 here. Magnus played bishop back to c8, we have rook to b, back to b2, uh, bishop back to f5, uh, and uh, they agree to a repetition, rook to b5, bishop to c8, uh, rook to b2, and now bishop to f5, and it was in this position that they agreed to a draw, or rather, it was a draw by threefold repetition. So this is, I quickly wanted to show you what happened in the uh, Noderbeck versus Magnus game, how Magnus uh, won, and now it's Magnus in the finals, uh, and he's waiting for his opponent, which will be the winner of the match, Fabiano Caruana versus Levon Aronia. So let's head on to the uh, first game that we are going to show from that match, uh, it is um, Caruana with the white pieces against Levon. Levon won a brilliant game in Classical. If you haven't seen it, do check it out in, in my previous video. And now Fabi needs a win in Classical in, in order to force tiebreaks. So let's see what happened here. Uh, pawn to d4 by Fabi. Pawn to d5 and now pawn to f3. Opening up the bishop, preparing maybe to strike with e4. With c4, there's a rook on c1, so it looks like a good idea. g6, we have knight to d3 and now knight to d6. We have pawn to g3, pawn to f5 and knight h to f2. Uh, bishop to h6, going after the, the rook on c1 and now pawn to f4. We have knight h to f7, uh, knight to e5 and knight to e4. So uh, pretty much in all of the positions that we see, in um, official random uh, the, you will see symmetrical ideas as uh, okay in in normal chess uh, players are able to avoid uh, uh, symmetry right from the start because they know openings but here you don't know openings so it's you know it's safest to, to play symmetrical <laughs> knight captures on e4 d captures on e4 you cannot capture with this pawn because bishop h3 and your rook is in trouble so uh, d captures on e4 and now queen to e1 uh, we have knight captures on e5, d captures with queen to e1, Fabi avoided a queen trade as he, uh, well, has to win the game, he wants as, as much material on the board as possible, pawn to c5 and rook to d1, going after the queen here, queen to e8 and now pawn to a4, starting the uh, expansion on the queen side, rook to c7 and now queen to a5, and here uh, Levon played bishop to e6, which is a weird move, uh, as your pawn on c5 is hanging, and Levon should just defend it with pawn to b6, and the game continues, let's say queen a6, bishop, bishop to e6 then. However, Levon played bishop to e6 without defending the pawn, he had a, a, an idea, uh, but the problem is uh, Fabi's position is now, uh, if played to perfection, uh, almost winning. Fabi plays bishop captures on c5, uh, queen to c6, now attacking the bishop, the idea is b6 of course, and then you want to capture on c2, so why did the... Uh, uh, Fabi capture on c5. Why did, why did he allow this queen to c6 move? What did Fabi see here? Well, rook to d8 with check, bishop to c8, and now comes the question, what uh, what was Fabi's idea here? Uh, there is only one winning move, and it's definitely not an easy one to spot here. Feel free to pause the video and try to find the only winning idea for Fabi while I give you a couple of seconds. So uh, for those of you who were able to do it, congratulations on playing uh, at the strength of an engine. And for those of you who just want to enjoy the show, it is bishop to e3. This is the only winning move. And to give you an, an example why, let's say you play pawn to b4. Okay, you, you defend the bishop, then comes b6, and you play bishop to a6. Of course, the, the queen cannot be captured, the bishop is pinned. Now comes b captures on c5, and once you trade queens, for example, captures, captures, and pawn to b5, uh, it's uh, just a terrible, terrible position. For example, rook to c7, now you're going to play pawn to e3, and... Uh... Okay, uh, black uh, black is a little bit better, but um, there's uh, n no r no real way to take it to to make advantage of your extra piece. So it's uh, you know in, in all fairness, uh, with, with little time on the clock, it could even be white who is uh, pushing for for something here. But after bishop to e3, uh, queen captures on c2 just isn't uh, enough to do anything. Levon did play it, of course, as it's the best uh, he has. King to a2 and now pawn to b6, attacking the queen. 
queen to a6, uh, again, the bishop is pinned, and now comes queen to c6. Uh, probably Levon's idea was uh, uh, queen to c4 check with, with a queen trade, but the problem is after queen captures and rook captures, there's this very nasty pawn to b3 move. And now after rook to c2 check, you'll play king to b1, attack the rook, and once the rook moves, you'll play pawn to a5, continue pushing, and your position is just uh, incredible. There's nothing black can do to develop. The bishop is completely... Uh, locked out of the game this rook cannot enter the game the bishop uh, also not not a lot to do here you can't develop it you can't move the king it's a really really a terrible position objectively it is winning for for fabiano uh but uh, after queen a6 levon uh, decided to defend with queen to c6 and now we have rook a to d1 okay queen to e6 with check king to a3 fab even goes up the board we have rook to c6 now uh, and pawn to a5 just trying to open up um, uh, the position here pawn to g5 trying to get this bishop somehow into the game and rook to e8 even a hinting and the other rook coming to d8 and doubling up on the on the back rank we have g captures on f4 and of course g captures on f4 uh, you do not want to uh, trade bishops of course your, your bishop is a monster here and uh, uh, Levon's bishop is really really terrible so rook to c4 uh, but uh, it doesn't matter. Queen to b5 is played, uh, and now king to c7, trying to run away. If you try something like, uh, let's say, queen to c6, again, it's insufficient. You, you simply trade captures, captures, pawn to a6, and uh, th there's nothing you can do. It's it's a really, really bad position. Like king to c7, just rook captures on e7, and then... Uh, N n not not a lot you can do for example rook captures here you cannot go here the rook controls it you have to go back king to b8 then the other rook comes to d8 and you are completely locked out of the game so levon says all right let's run for it king to c7 now comes rook to d6 beautiful move by fabi of course if captures then the, the queen is captured but there is nothing better for you to do uh, what, what can you do with the queen if, if you play something like queen to f7 then comes bishop captures on b6 with check and after pawn captures queen captures on b6 is checkmate or any other variation also ends in checkmate so e captures on d6 was played trying to give up the queen but okay you will win back some material but fabi is merciless bishop captures on b6 with check a captures queen captures on b, uh, b6 uh, king to d7 and now queen to d8 with check and after king to c6 only now rook captures on e6 as you cannot capture the rook on a8 would hang so bishop to f8 getting the bishop out of harm's way but now even rook captures on d6 fabi finds a beautiful checkmate here uh, bishop captures on d6 queen captures on d6 and he was in this position on move 31 that levon arunyan resigned the game uh, as there is nothing more to be done here one more move uh, doesn't matter if it's king to b7 or king to b5 ends in queen to b6 checkmate and uh, well thus he resigned so uh, Levon uh, lost, uh, Fabi uh, won the classical, uh, second classical game, he forced tie breaks and now let's check out what happened in the first game of the tie breaks. Uh, this is the first one uh, where Levon had the white pieces. Uh, let me just uh, change the letter on the little robot so it doesn't confuse anyone. Uh, you know, even though I mentioned it's, it's a rapid game, you say, oh no, you have to change the letter on the little robot. Uh, so there we go. Uh, let's check out what happened in the first rapid game. So here again, a new setup. It's a, it's a different setup every game, and players have very very little time uh, to figure out what what to play. You know, it's just I, I can't even imagine how they how, how they don't mess up in the opening. Uh, pawn to d4 by Levon, we have pawn to d5, pawn to c3, and look at this, the king and rook are here, which means that you can already castle, because these are the, the squares that um, the, the king and rook will use once the castle is finished, and that's the, those are the rules of, of official random, so you just castle here. Bishop to c2, now if you're not careful, let's say you play b6, uh, bishop captures on h7 is checkmate, uh, so of course he doesn't allow that, knight to g6, and now knight to g3. Uh, we have knight to f6, and now knight to f3, uh, pawn to c6, nicely defending the center, and castles kingside also by Levon. And already you can see this is a position resembling pretty much a normal chess game, uh, with, you know, bishops uh, excellently placed, uh, the, the queen, okay, 
uh, could be a little bit better, but still, you know, do, doing okay here. Uh, bishop to g4, nicely developing with bishop captures on g6. Levon gives up a bishop pair in order to plant a knight on e5. It's a questionable decision maybe, but uh, it is a rapid chess, so you have to play quickly. And, you know, the, the less time you have, the, the stronger the knights become. So captures and knight to e5. And, okay, you could go back with something like bishop to c8, but bishop to c7 first, it seems like... Um, Fabi agrees, knights are stronger, the, the shorter the time control. Uh, bishop to f4, and now bishop back to e6. We have pawn to e3, and queen to c8. Uh, queen to d1, trying to activate the queen, and now bishop captures on e5. Bishop captures, uh, and knight to h7. We have knight to e2, and pawn to f6. Chasing away the bishop, bishop to g3, and now knight to g5. We have pawn to f3, uh, preventing the knight from going to e4, and now bishop to f5. Five. We have rook to c1, uh, now with the idea of uh, pawn to c4, trying to open up the c file for the rook, so of course uh, Fabi stops it, pawn to b5, pawn to b3, again he wants to play it, and now knight to f7. We have pawn to c4, uh, the time has come, captures, captures, and now queen to a6, putting pressure on the c4 pawn, but also the a2 pawn, knight to c3, and now d captures on c4. We have pawn to e4, grabbing the full center, Bishop back to c8, and now queen to a4, offering a queen trade. Knight to d6 says, okay, we can trade, but we trade on my terms. Rook f to d1, and now rook to d8, just nicely developing. Uh, queen to b4, uh, now avoiding the queen trade, and bishop to e6. We have rook to b1, and bishop to f7. Pawn to a4, uh, advancing on the queen side. Now comes queen to c8, uh, and queen to c5. We have rook to d7, uh, rook to b2, preparing to double up on the b-file, uh, but this was um, uh, this was sort of a mistake, as it allows uh, th this knight to really outmaneuver all of white's pieces. Here, Fabi goes knight b7, attacks the queen, and after queen to a3, now goes knight to a5. And now you can even plant a knight on b3, and there will be no doubling of the rooks on the b-file. So pawn to d5 instead, knight to b3, uh, and rook to e1. We have c captures on d5, e captures and queen to d8, now putting pressure on the d5 pawn, queen to b4, uh, and now rook to c8, not allowing the uh, the c pawn to fall, uh, rook b to e2, and now pawn to a5. And here we have queen, uh, sorry, uh, queen to a3, going back with the queen, Queen to b6 with check, bishop to f2 blocking, and now queen to b4, just offering a queen trade. Uh, queen back to b2, you don't really gain anything by trading queens, but even keeping the queens on the board is, um, uh, well, favorable for Fabi. Uh, bishop captures on d5. We have knight captures, rook captures, and now uh, rook captures on e7. Queen to d2, now offering a queen trade while also preparing to, to do some serious damage. Uh, queen to a3, of course you cannot trade. We have rook to d6, uh, and now, uh, now, now the magic happens. Bishop to g3, attacks the rook, now queen to d4, check, king to h1, and now rook d to d8, getting the rook out of harm's way. Pawn to h3, and now queen to c5, offering a queen trade. Queen to b2, avoiding the trade, and here, uh, get this, Fabi played rook to b8, and he blunders the rook here. Absolutely incredible stuff. From a winning position to a dead lost position, and Levon happily takes the rook. Bishop captures on b8, rook captures, and now queen to e2, tripling up on the e-file, and uh, now uh, Levon is just much, much better. There's not much Fabi can do here. Knight to d4 was played, queen f2, pawn to c3, advancing the pass pawn, now queen to g3, going for captures and checkmate, so rook to f8, and of course queen captures on g6, knight to f5, defending the g7 square, now rook to e8, and uh, well, that, that's uh, all there is, knight to d6 was played, uh, uh, attacking the rook, but now rook captures, king captures, and even queen to d3, which is uh, a little bit imprecise, because you can still do a lot of damage with pawn to c2, there's no reason to allow it, uh, queen to c2 should have been played, uh, but uh, queen to a3, uh, Fabi doesn't punish it with little time on the clock, we have rook to e3 going after the pawn, and now just king to g8, we have ro queen captures on c3, now black has no counterplay, queen captures on a4, and queen to b3 with check forces a queen trade, captures, captures, king to f7, 
uh, and now rook to b6, chasing away the knight from the defense of the pawn, knight c4, rook to c6, and he was in this position on move 58 that Fabiano Caruana resigned the game, as there is nothing more to be done here. So from a completely winning position to a dead lost one uh, with the blunder of a rook, but you know, we're, we're just getting started. And now, okay, you resign because after you move the knight, of course, you kick away the king, okay, uh, and now uh, rook to a7, the knight can defend, but uh, that's pretty much it, you just start bringing your king into the game, the knight cannot move, the pawn cannot move, the king cannot move, because the pawn is hanging, uh, of course, dead lost. Uh, so, uh, Levon wins, and now we go into the second rapid tiebreaks game, uh, where Levon only needs a draw with the black pieces in order uh, to win the match, so let's see what happened here, Fabi opens with pawn to b4, something we, we really love to hear. We have pawn to b6, so both players are opening up their queens, and look at this, the, the bishops are uh, already x-raying the queens. Uh, we have bishop to b2, and now queen to e4. Levon, inspired by his great win in the previous game, uh, decides to, to get a little bit uh, adventurous here. Uh, and now pawn to a3. Uh, it seems that uh, queen to e4 was a great idea because, uh, well, the c2 pawn is hanging and the b4 pawn is hanging, but Fabi not convinced. He just plays pawn to a3, and if queen captures on c2, he's just gonna attack the queen and then pick up the c7 pawn, so really just trading. Bishop to b7, we have knight to f3, and now knight to f6. We have pawn to g3, and queenside castles here. Again, made possible, uh, as uh, these are the only two squares you need. Knight, uh, sorry, that's not a knight, knight to c3, and queen to f5, getting out of harm's way. Uh, castles king side and now queen to h5 uh, the idea being of course knight to g4 bishop captures on f3 and the queen captures on h2 checkmate if you can get that in you, you will be very happy so bishop to g2 knight to g4 and you never know fabi blundered the rook he might blunder checkmate now but he doesn't pawn to h3 uh, we have knight to e5 offering a trade captures captures uh, king captures and now queen captures on e5 Levon very happy, just trading pieces, now comes um, uh, pawn to d4. There are no good discoveries here, because as soon as the knight moves, uh, you have these checks, so uh, no point in, in doing any discoveries. We have queen back to h5, pawn to a4. Now Fabi wants to attack the black king. Uh, pawn to a6, now comes pawn to d5. We have pawn to g5, now Levon also going after Fabi's king, and pawn to a5. We have bishop captures on c3, Bishop captures and pawn to b5, closing the position on the queen side. But uh, Fabi will, of course, move the bishop, play c4, and bust open the queen side. So it's it's a question: Can Levon do something on the king side before Fabi does this on the queen side, or can he just hold on? Uh, rook to d2, first defending the e2 pawn, pawn to f5. Levon also strikes on the king side. Bishop to g7, attacks the rook, rook to f7, and now pawn to c4. Even the the uh, removal of the bishop. From from c3 to enable c4 comes with tempo with an attack on the rook on f8. So here pawn to f4, attacking and c captures on b5. And uh, you, you don't really have the option of playing captures because then a6, a7 is just too strong. So pawn to g4. Levon also continues the attack, h4, and now f captures on g3. Here he captures, we have rook captures on f1, and now queen captures on f1, uh, queen to g6. Putting pressure on the bishop, but just b captures on a6. Idea being that if queen captures, you're going to play a7, uh, the knight cannot be saved because a8 becomes a queen, so uh, no point in trading that, uh, knight captures on a6 was played, and now just pawn to e3, opening up the queen's attack towards the knight, we have knight captures on b4, and now queen to c4, and now there's really nothing better than to take the bishop, so queen captures on g7, queen captures on b4, and queen to a1. Uh, trying to defend, but it is much too late. Rook to b2 threatens checkmate, pawn to d6 creates a, some breathing room for the black king, but now queen captures on g4 with check. Queen b7 is even faster, uh, but queen to g4 is um, sufficient. Rook to d7, we have rook to f2, and he was in this position on move 30 that Levon Arunyan resigned the game. Uh, as there is nothing more to be done here. So rook to f2 uh, will be uh, checkmate, uh, or uh, not checkmate, but you will have to move the king as the rook is pinned, and then you're just going to lose the rook, you're going to be down a rook, so uh, pointless to, to continue this. And now we enter the blitz section. So let me just change the letter on the little robot so it doesn't confuse you. Uh, so it doesn't. Yeah, there we go. All right, changing the letter on the little robot. 
there we go now we enter the blitz section and in the first blitz game uh levon had the white pieces and he opened with pawn to c4 again uh different setup completely different setup you have uh they have two girls that uh sort of you know the, the, there are 960 little balls and then they pick one and then they decide which format is played uh they could have done that uh more easily i guess but you know they they want to make a show out of everything uh so pawn to c4 look at the bishops uh all four bishops uh, uh, x-raying each other this is a uh, one cool uh chess 960 position or official random position so pawn to c4 pawn to g6 we have b3 and the bishop captures on a1 of course uh, bishops will get, be, get traded off right away queen captures and pawn to b5 we have um pawn to c5 and now pawn to d6 we have queen to c3 uh, adding a defender on c5 and now even pawn to b4 queen to c2 and now knight to f6 uh, we have castles castles again castles is possible as these are the only two squares you need and pawn to g3 just offering a trade of bishop so bishop captures on h1 king captures and now pawn to e uh, sorry pawn to e5 uh, pawn to d4 we have knight to e7 and now knight to f3 pawn to e4 attacking the knight knight to g5 and now knight e to d5 uh so uh, again it's blitz and knights are more powerful than bishops and uh, both players still have their knights knight captures on e4 it's a bit of a bit of a trade-off but you got nothing better than to, to capture on e4 so knight captures on e4 knight captures on e4 queen captures on e4 and knight to c3 uh forking the queen and the the rook here so queen back to c uh, queen, queen goes to c6 we have knight captures on d1 rook captures and the d captures on c5 we have queen captures on c5 and now queen to b7 with check king to g1 uh rook to d5 going after the black queen so black is better here uh but again uh, knights are very tricky bastards let's see if Levon can uh, do, do something here if he has more rabbits to pull out of his hat so queen back to c2 rook f to d8 and now pawn to e3 we have pawn to c5 trying to open up the d file uh knight to e2 nicely defending the d4 square c captures on d4 knight captures now this is a beautiful knight here it cannot be opposed by either rooks or the queen uh, so rook to c8 attacking the queen and queen to e2 we have pawn to a5 now comes pawn to h4 Levon wants to uh, well maybe try and create some some pressure against the black king pawn to h5 of course stopping that and now king h2 uh, queen to d7 uh, we have king to g2 and now pawn to a4 trying to create some uh, well some play anywhere on the board b captures on a4 queen captures on a4 and now rook to b1 trying to trade off uh, the, well the a pawn is still defended but you are putting pressure on the b pawn so rook d to c5 and now queen to b2 now putting pressure on the b4 pawn uh rook to c4 just nicely defending we have queen to b3 offering a queen trade and queen to a8 with check no reason to trade just yet king to h2 and now rook to c1 and now it's a problem for uh levon because fabi is threatening a mate in one so f3 has to be played doesn't matter if you trade rooks uh, then the other rooks uh, rook take it takes its place and you will have to play f3 eventually so rook captures on b1 queen captures and now queen to a3 and now queen to c1 is coming and uh well levon's position is just lost pawn to e4 was played rook to a8 also you can go after the pawn king to h3 and now queen to c3 queen to g1 but now rook captures on a2 a zero counterplay here pawn to e5 was played now comes queen to a1 and he was in this position on move 37 that levon arunyan resigned the game as there is nothing more to be done here if you move the queen then queen to h1 will be checkmated the pawn covers the g4 square and if you trade of course it's a much uh, much better position for uh, for black uh when i say much better i mean obviously winning here you have a rook against the knight and the pawn all ready to become a queen so now let's see what happened in the second blitz game where levon uh has the black pieces and he needs a win in order to force armageddon so let's see what happened pawn to e4 pretty standard position you have rooks you know where they belong this knight is also where, where it belongs the queen is where it belongs so it's uh almost like regular chess uh pawn to d5 sort of a, a scandinavian but not really knight to f6 we have knight to e3 and knight captures on d5 we have pawn to c4 knight back to f6 and pawn to d4 we have pawn to c5 mixing in a little bit of uh benoni there d captures we have queen captures on d1 and king captures uh and um uh, uh Levon 
well, he, he did trade off queens with the black pieces, but, you know, he does have to win this in order to force Armageddon. We have bishop to e5, uh, and now king to c1. Uh, bishop to c6, nicely developing both of the bishops to useful diagonals. Knight to e2, and now knight 8 to d7. Bishop to c3, puts pressure on the bishop, but uh, Levon trades. Uh, bishop, uh, bishop captures, knight captures. Pawn to a5, stopping pawn to b4. This is uh, essential in all uh, 960 variants of chess. Uh, rook to d1, uh, and now pawn to e6. We have pawn to b3, and now knight captures on c5. And okay, it's a playable position for both, uh, but with little time on the clock, you know, it's not that playable. Bishop to c2, uh, pawn to h5, we have pawn to h4, knight to g4, putting pressure on the f2 pawn. So knight captures, h captures, and pawn to g3, just defending the pawn here. We have king to c7, and king to b2. We have rook to h5, developing the rook this way now pawn to a3 preparing to advance the pawn to b4 g5 busting open uh, the position on the king side h captures rook captures and of course pawn to b4 we have knight back to d7 uh, rook to d4 uh, we have a captures on b4 a captures rook captures on a1 king captures and now pawn to f5 so levon uh, getting some play on the king side but uh, nothing that should uh, you know uh, result in, in him winning the game. Pawn to c5, uh, knight to e5 now. We have a pawn to b5, grabbing more space here on the queen side, bishop to d7. We have bishop to a4, uh, now comes pawn to b6, pawn to c6, and bishop to c8. So Levon's bishop is completely out of the game. Uh, bishop to b3, putting pressure on the e6 pawn, and now rook to h5. We have rook to d2, now comes knight to f3, attacking the rook, and now rook back, uh, rook all the way to a2, going after the uh, a7 check. Uh, we have knight to d4, uh, bishop to c4, the, the, the bishop here is hanging, so you have to defend it. Rook to h1 with check, and now king to b2. We have rook to h2, preparing to capture, uh, but now king to a3. Nicely defending, we have king to d6, and king to b4. Uh, cutting off the king from reaching the c5 square, and now it's getting very, very dangerous for that black king. Pawn to e5 was played, now comes rook to a8, going after the bishop. Levon defends with bishop to e6, and now bishop captures on e6. Knight captures and now rook to a7, threatening checkmate, so you have to defend, a knight to c5 was played. Uh, knight to c7 is the only way to, to hold the position at least a little bit, but after knight to c5, uh, it is completely winning for uh, for Fabi, he played uh, pawn to c7. You have to first play rook to g7, uh, but Fabi was down to 5 seconds on the clock, and get this, pawn to c7 was played, rook to h8, stopping the promotion of the pawn, and here uh, the position is is a draw, but Fabi, with, with 3 seconds on the clock, played rook to b7, and he... Uh, blundered another rook. Levon captured on b7, and Fabi just resigned because he's now down a full rook, and there's nothing more to be done here. So uh, Fabi blunders the, the rapid section, Fabi blunders the blitz section, and now we go into Armageddon. So let me just change the letter on the little robot so you guys don't get confused that this is Armageddon. Uh, there we go. And now, finally, let's check out what happened in the Armageddon game. In the Armageddon game, uh, Fabi bid better. So Fabi got the black pieces. Uh, he he started with uh, 4 minutes and 11 seconds, and Levon gets the full 5 minutes. But, uh, as usual, in Armageddon, Levon, uh, who is white in this game, has to win the game. So let's check it out. Levon, with the white pieces, starts with knight to g3. Pawn to f6, we have pawn to f4, and pawn to d5. We have pawn to b4. Now, I, I think uh, by, by, by this point, uh, chess uh, didn't really make sense to, to either of them because the positions were changing so rapidly. Their heart rates were through the roof. Uh, they, they were wearing the, the heart rate monitors, and Fabi's uh, heart rate at some point even reached 170 beats per minute. So that's, I mean... Uh, that, that's absolutely incredible. Uh, I, I think Levon never went uh, above 130 or maybe 135, but yeah, Fabi actually reached 170. So, okay, pawn to b6. Uh, we have a bishop to d4, uh, nicely uh, centralizing the bishop, also fighting against uh, e5. 
uh, knight to d6 and now pawn to e3 with bishop to e6 uh, and the bishop to h5 with check just checking what fabi will uh, block with so fabi blocks with the knight and now knight c to e2 we have castles as this is of course possible d3 and the bishop to d7 we have castles as well uh, and now rook to c8 it, it just looks so cool when castling happens without the rook actually moving uh, bishop back to f3 uh, and pawn to c5 now striking in the center attacking the bishop b captures b captures and the bishop back to b2 we have bishop to b6 and pawn to c4 so uh, Levon has to look for any kind of a chance to, to open up the position to play for a win uh, but he's already uh, well below on time than Fabi he has two and a half minutes uh, whereas Fabi has three and a half minutes and it was Fabi who started with a minute less so bishop to c6 of course countering the light square bishop on this diagonal we have captures captures and pawn to e4 uh, pawn to c4 opening up a discovery here king to h1 and the bishop back to b7 we have pawn to e5 and now just c captures on b3 fabi not want to be tricked easily finds the absolute best move uh, we have knight to d4 and now we uh, have knight to c4 by fabi uh, interestingly f captures on e5 uh, is uh, winning uh, but it's it's a really cool line. I have to show it to you. Captures, captures, knight captures on e5. Bishop captures on b7. Queen captures now knight to e6. Uh, but doesn't matter uh, actually what white plays because there is this knight to g4 move. And now after rook captures on f8, rook captures on f8, and now rook to f1 countering the rook here. Rook captures, queen captures, and now the winning idea is knight to f2 with check. Point being that after king to g1, there's d2, and the d1 square is covered by the knight uh, that's defended, and that's all there is. So you have to take into consider consideration this uh, pass pawn, even though there's so much stuff on the board, you know, if you can trade it off, then the pass pawn should be winning. But okay, knight to c4 was played, and now knight to e6. Knight d to f5 is the best, but yeah, a little time on the clock, knight to e6 was played. Bishop captures on f3 now, rook captures, and now knight to d2. Attacking the rook here. So rook captures on d3, and knight captures on b1. Fabi just wins the exchange. Queen captures on b1, and now rook f to e8. We have e captures on f6. Uh, e captures on f6 and now knight captures on g7. Levon now goes all out. There's nothing more, more to look for here. If the attack works, it works. If it doesn't, then it doesn't. King captures and knight to h5 check. Going after the f6 pawn. The bishop is nicely helping out, but king f8 is the only move that saves Fabi and Fabi plays it. Knight captures on f6. Uh, rook to e2 now going for checkmate here and you have to defend it. Rook to g3. But now... Interestingly, the, even though Fabi doesn't have to win the game, it's a really cool position. There is only one winning move for Fabi here. Uh, you know, take a break here. Feel free to pause the video and win the game for Black for Fabi while I give you a couple of seconds. So uh, for those of you who were able to do it, congratulations on finding this beautiful maneuver. And for those of you who just want to enjoy the show, it is king to e7. Yes, this is the only move that wins the game. And the reason it wins the game uh, is that, well, be best to show you with an example. Let's say you double up rooks on the second rank. There comes bishop to a3 with check. And yes, you can block with bishop to c5, but now rook g8 check picks up the queen on a8. So that's the problem. But by playing king to e7, Fabi figured this out. There is no more way for you to actually go after the king because if bishop to a3 check, you can capture the knight. That's the idea. Uh, and okay, you, you can still harass the king a little bit. Let's say queen to a1 check, king to f5, queen to b1 check, but now rook c to c2. Uh, queen b5 check, you're going to hide the king on f6, and that's it. No more useful checks. Uh, black just wins. So instead, uh, pawn to h4 was played. Now comes rook c to c2. Not just useful as you double rooks uh, on, the, uh, uh, on the second rank going after the g2 pawn, but also you stop the white queen from going into the game. So queen d1, Levon has to try somehow. The, the, if he can give this check, it's going to be great for him. But Fabi just plays rook captures on b2. Takes the bishop, and now the knight is undefended. So any check will... Uh, result in queen captures on f6 so knight to g8 check king to f8 not um, you know giving Levon anything here 
uh, but uh, you know he wasn't giving Levon anything here in the rapid or the blitz section and then he just blundered a full rook in both uh, both of the games so it's still not too late for Fabi to blunder something knight to f6 king e7 uh, knight to d5 with check king to f8 and now queen to d3 uh, but that's uh, all there is rook to e1 check was played king to h2 we have bishop to g1 check king h3 and queen to c8 with check and it was in this position that um, I think Levon lost on time but also his position is just resigns uh, as there is nothing more to be done here so pawn to f5 can be played you have to block check but then knight e5 and that's it there's no move you can make here it's uh to, to give you a cool example let's say you play queen a3 check and you win the rook so seems like a fine idea but bishop to c5 blocks check and after you capture rook to h1 is checkmate that's why knight to e5 was so strong so one 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 of the cooler <laughs> lines after queen to c8 check uh, but yeah, it was a really an intense battle. Magnus wrapped it up fairly quickly in classical, but it took uh, uh, Fabi seven games against Levon to reach uh, uh, to, to, to reach the conclusion. And now we will have uh, Fabiano Caruana versus Magnus Carlsen in the final of the Freestyle Chess Go to Challenge 2024. Tough break for Levon, uh, you know, for Levon. But what are you gonna do? He uh, he played some interesting chess, especially that first game in the classical. It was a masterpiece. But uh, Fabi was able to, you know. Uh, stay calm at, at a heart rate of 170 plus. Uh, so yeah, uh, that's the game. Hope you guys uh, enjoyed it. And also what I found interesting is that here you had basically four seasoned players uh, facing four younger players. And in the end, in the finals, we again have Magnus and Fabi. So it's, uh, you know, still not uh, time for, for the younger generation to take over. And especially here where you don't have openings. So it's hard to say who who you know uh, is better when, when you have openings because the younger players they they're able to memorize a lot more they're, they're able to do so much more work with the engine uh, but even if you you know take that away from them they still did uh, very well uh, but yeah again we have Magnus versus Fabi in the finals and that is uh, what we will have until the two of them decide otherwise. Uh, so yeah, I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, I would like to thank Robert Aratun, uh, Alexandru Gita, David Gaspar, and Kevin, Kevin Hawkins and B4 Forever uh, for a contribution to my channel. Thank you a lot. I really appreciate it. As usual, you can check two of my previous videos here. Thank you all for watching and I will see you soon. Continuing to check up on your wonderful suggestions uh, and whatever else happens in the chess world. Uh, so thank you all. I will see you soon and have an excellent rest of your day.